I was watching the news yesterday, and Marianne Williamson was speaking. She said something to the effect of, our country is drowning in information and starving for understanding. I thought that is so true. We have access to so much information online, on television, in books, on apps. I remember when I was a kid, my dad telling me about his experience in New York City when he was in the Navy. He remembered being awed by all of the records he could find there. He's a musician, and records were something he valued. He used to say, if you want to find something, go to New York City. I realized a few years ago that all of us now lived in Dad's New York City. We have access to anything we can afford online. Information, products, and communication. The world has changed quickly, even in the past 30 or 40 years. Yet our ability or desire to understand has not always kept up with the changes. In the Gospel today, Nicodemus is an educated leader in the community. The Gospel writer makes his status as a Pharisee and a leader clear. Therefore, Nicodemus would have had access to a lot of information for his time. Yet he lacks understanding. The Gospel says Nicodemus comes at night. In the Gospel of John, night symbolizes a separation from the presence of God. John, therefore, is making a distinct point that Nicodemus is separated from God's presence. Yet the fact is, he is coming to Jesus, which means he is seeking some sort of understanding. Unfortunately, it is clear in the reading that he does not understand even after Jesus has tried to explain God's wisdom to him. The scene does not end with Nicodemus leaving, but we do not have any sense by the end of the passage that Nicodemus has been enlightened. Not that we can blame him, because I think we've all been there, right? I know I have. I've been searching for God's call since I was young, yet it took me a while of going in the wrong direction, dealing with my own anxiety and self-doubt, and trying to figure out out on my own until I finally got to a point where I felt, this is where I feel I am called to be. Perhaps you have had these moments in your life also. We have certainly all had moments when we were Nicodemus, confused by what God is trying to tell us. Yet Nicodemus must have known there was something special about Jesus, and that's why he went to him. It's true that he did not get it in that moment. We actually know in the Gospel of John if or when, Nic we actually do not know in the Gospel of John if or when Nicodemus understands what Jesus told him. Yet the things Jesus is telling him is not easy. We don't necessarily even fully understand it. The words you are probably familiar with from this passage are born again. This is a phrase that is used over and over in some Christian circles, and it comes from this text. What exactly is Jesus asking Nicodemus, and what is Nicodemus missing? The Greek term that means, again, anathen, also means from above. Gail O'Day says the problem with the English translation is that English privileges one meaning over the other. But this double meaning is inherent in the word. The gospel writer intended for both meanings to be heard. Jesus is challenging Nicodemus to look deeper than the surface meaning with this word. To be born anathen is to speak of the time of new birth and the place from which the birth was generated. Yet Nicodemus only comments on again. Can one enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? Yet if both terms, born again and from above, are heard, Jesus is talking about a radical new birth generated from above, a, a new birth generated from God. Therefore, that new birth is 
God's, not ours. God creates the new birth in us. When Nicodemus does not understand what Jesus is saying here, Jesus tries again using Nicodemus's womb imagery. He says, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. That can definitely be imagery of baptism. Yet as O'Day says, it can also be imagery to include both the spiritual rebirth and the physical birth as necessary to entering the kingdom of God. The exit out of a mother's womb is done through water. Therefore, Jesus says, entering God's kingdom requires a double birth, a physical birth and a spiritual birth, rebirth. New life comes from both water, from both birth, from water and spirit. That interpretation rejects a dualistic theology that claims the spiritual is the only good and the body is evil, Rather, the spirit and flesh are held together. New life comes from both birth from water and spirit. Therefore, we can value our bodies and we do not have to be disconnected from them. Even after including his own imagery, Nicodemus's imagery, Nicodemus still does not understand and Jesus seems to get frustrated with him. This is the last we hear from Nicodemus, and Jesus is no longer addressing him after this. Rather, Jesus' address turns to the plural form where he describes his role as son of man and the role he plays in our salvation. One of the most beloved verses in scriptures come from this section, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Martin Luther will call John 3.16 the entire gospel in miniature. John is not an easy text, and the confusion of Nicodemus is not hard to understand. Yet as Jesus says, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We can trust that God will keep working with us even through our struggles to understand. Nicodemus was not an entirely lost cause. At the end of this gospel, he and Joseph of Arimathea will prepare Jesus' body for burial. God did not seem to give up on Nicodemus, and we can trust she will not give up on us either. When we lack understanding, and when we feel overwhelmed by information, we can turn to God, and she will help lead us to her.